Bear down, Chicago Bears fans. The pro day is over. Caleb Williams looks like a star. A lot of people super excited about what they saw on the field yesterday. If you are a um, media person or something like that, then you're absolutely loving what you saw. If you were a Justin Fields fan, you probably didn't like what you saw because uh, it wasn't the, the greatest thing that you've ever experienced or anything like that. So uh, the question is, where do you go from here? Uh, Caleb Williams didn't throw for 400 touchdown passes in his first practice pro day. So again, there's some people who are going to be very unhappy uh, with what they saw. But generally speaking, from all reports that are coming out right now, Chicago Bears, uh, for three days, met with Caleb Williams, and they feel like they are 90% completed with their process, and they believe that that process went very well, and that the next move right here uh, with 99% certainty is that Caleb Williams will be the first overall draft pick for the Chicago Bears in the 2024 NFL Draft. Now, if you guys like this type of content, make sure you hit the like button for me on the way in, uh, and, and let's let's kick this off. So uh, the Bears attend Caleb Williams Pro Day and come away from all accounts feeling very, very, very good about uh, what they saw. Now, if you are, by the way, uh, on crypto Twitter and you saw something like this and you saw Cliff Kingsbury and Shane Waldron, you might be asking yourself, well, why would they be doing that? Why would Cliff Kingsbury be there uh, if Caleb Williams is going to be going first? Well, I remember Marshawn Lloyd had his pro day. Uh, Brendan Rice had his pro day. All of the USC players had their pro days. And Cliff Kingsbury, of course, he's looking at Caleb Williams. Of course, they're probably going to make an incredible offer at some point for Caleb Williams to the Chicago Bears. They haven't yet, or if they have, we haven't heard anything about it. Uh, but I think that it's all but uh, all but said and done that the Bears are going to end up taking Caleb Williams. And there's no moving down in the draft at this point. Nothing going to change the 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 lockdown. So Shane Waldron, Cliff Kingsbury uh, kicking it, uh, hanging out, doing their thing. And that was just a piece of it. The other piece was, as you can see in the screen here, you had um, uh, you had Keenan Allen who showed up. And uh, Caleb and Keenan hugged it out. Uh, I'm pretty sure that they're going to get some knives. They're going to fight to the death over the number 13. Uh, what do you think, by the way? Leave a comment. Let me know who's going to be number 13 going into next season. Is it going to be Caleb Williams or is it going to be Keenan Allen? Because once this goes, uh, once this is done, uh, they're going to have to start picking numbers. And Keenan Allen's been number 13 for a long period of time. So what is going to happen there? I'm certainly going to be interested uh, to see which one is going to be number 13 in the Bears roster. Let me know who you think uh, it's going to be. Uh, it, it's got to be Keenan Allen, right? Like, like there's no way um, Caleb Williams is going to have to be number zero, right? What number do we think? How about this? What number do you think? Put that in the description or put that in the comments down below. What do you think Caleb Williams' number is going to end up being anyway? Uh, I know that it would be kind of crazy for it to be number one, right? I don't I don't think the I don't think that uh Chicago Bears uh and, and the fans or Twitter are ready for Caleb Williams wearing a number one jersey. Not this soon. You know what I mean? Like I, I would imagine that, that would be <laughs> I can't imagine that wouldn't be very good. Uh so but I mean you know you never know what he's gonna end up doing. But by all accounts um let me get let me get into this article just a little bit. <sighs> Chicago Bears are expected to draft Caleb Williams as number one. There were as many as nine representatives that were there. Ryan Poles, Ian Cunningham, uh, the assistant GM, Matt Eberflus, the head coach, offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, quarterback coach, Kerry Joseph, uh, even Keenan Allen showed up. Uh, while pro days shouldn't be used to analyze prospects, as there's no defense on the field, they can provide a glimpse of a prospect's skill set. And Williams showed off during his pro day. And you have Chicago Bears. You have a bunch of different places showing you all of these great throws that he was making uh, to Brendan Rice, really uh, showing off Brendan Rice, as a matter of fact, which could be a later draft pick for the Bears 
if things work out in our favor. So uh, there's going to be plenty of reactions. And by the way, not all of them are positive. Uh, Clay Harbor has a comment here. Nothing crazy in Kayla's pro day, but what I did notice is he throws a very catchable ball and his teammates love him. And here's something that you've for so long heard this weird sort of narrative about Caleb Williams, that his teammates didn't like him, that they weren't invited to a birthday party when he was nine years old. He didn't know these college kids at that time, but he, they didn't they didn't get invited to the birthday party, you know, whatever wild shit that is. And it, it didn't work out that way. You know, the way that it worked out was it turns out his teammates are out there uh, hugging him and high-fiving him, and he's having a great time with them. So apparently that narrative was not true now that narrative could have been true by the way at oklahoma you know maybe he was just not having a good time at, at oklahoma uh but i mean he moved along with lincoln riley so one has to think that you know this was uh, I, I think that this was all much ado about nothing max markham says that release and touch on the ball is so smooth uh if you pop this up you know we'll take a quick look at it and you can see what really happens here uh, we got the snap, we got the big, we got the big run, and then we got the nice delivery right there. Uh, now that's inside, that's not on the outside. So it's, it's, you know, the guy, the guy's making nice throws, giving people chances to catch the ball. Again, there's no defense. So we really don't know what this looks like. All we know uh, is that, you know, most of us could probably, some of us could probably just make that throw. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't think it was that fantastic but th he's got a natural arm he's got natural talent he's got good footwork um not great footwork but good footwork so you know a lot a lot of good stuff happening caleb williams last throw of the pro day will be running on a loop for the next three weeks uh and, and this doing that drop back and then just storing it and look at this full stride finds the guy in full stride, gives him the opportunity, the only person with the opportunity to catch that ball. Uh, I mean, again, you know, that's, let's look at that one more time because it's a fantastic throw. Uh, he, he makes the long throw. You don't have to adjust. Look, look at this. The wide receiver is not adjusting. The wide receiver is just doing his route. And as he's doing his route, uh, that ball is coming right to him. Now, not all was good, by the way. Caleb ends his throwing by dapping and hugging Ryan Poles. Uh, stay away from him. Uh, <laughs> this is Caleb Williams and Adam Peters. Um, and then my takeaway from the Caleb Williams Pro Day is that there is no rollout crazy sidearm throws. Everything from the pocket and the footwork looked clean and natural. Uh, missed some deep throws, but hit a few and was on target short and intermediate. Um after watching Caleb Williams pro date on the NFL plus stream, my main takeaway is I'd like to see a little more before entering him into the punting competition, but it's something to consider. Somebody's being make, making jokes out here. Adam Hoge says, uh, Caleb Williams throwing session just ended. I counted only four balls on the ground, all deep balls. One was a drop. Dude is just smooth. You can see it. Easy throwing motion ball just zips out, uh, this at soldier field. Uh, and we can see this move right here. Boom. And again, just hitting the guy. This is the end play again. Uh, just hitting it in full stride. Uh, these are the type of plays that we are looking to see happening, right? Uh, so, you know, there, and, and by the way, uh, there's a lot of people uh, that were, were less than kind. Uh, these are, you know, these, these are the positives that people are seeing in Caleb Williams. And it wasn't all positive. There's some people who are just going to not like what they see. So, and that's okay because you're not going to, you're not going to please everybody. Speaking of not pleasing everybody, Dan Orlovsky of all people. And you knew, you knew it was going to happen. Uh, somebody was going to be out there hating uh, Dan Orlovsky on Caleb Williams pro day, underwhelming performance, throwing the football. Uh, Dan Orlovsky called Williams Pro Day underwhelming and thought it was potentially by design. Since everyone knows the special off-schedule throws the quarterback can make, showing off things a bit simpler could have been the USC goal. It was an underwhelming performance throwing the football, but it was geared towards the naysayers. He wanted to kind of almost have a governor on him and not have much flash because his tape is so flashy. I did like the fact that Luis Riddick said, uh, watching him, he, Luis Riddick, uh, how he walked around and handled himself was impressive.
just over a month out of the NFL draft. Williams is the consensus number one pick. Chicago traded away Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers, leaving them without a franchise quarterback. Otherwise, um, others, including Orlovsky, have argued against the Bears taking Williams. But thus far, all signs point towards it happening. Dan Orlovsky is a hater, right? So if Dan Orlovsky is a hater, what's he going to do? What can only be described as hater level shit. So I think the pro day is a little bit of a microcosm of where the Bears likely are. In 2023, there's not a lot of eyebrow raising, jaw dropping, wow throws from the pocket. There are tons of it outside the pocket. In 2022, there's a fair amount of eyebrow raising, jaw dropping, wow throws from the pocket. So you're trying to figure out if you're the Bears, why was that the case? USC was completely different in 2022 than in 2023. Uh, and, and, and by the way, there, there were there were a lot of different reasons um, uh, that 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 Caleb Williams had for being able to look a little bit better uh, in this context. And one of them was uh, Jordan Addison coming um, and, and coming along and he was able to just really uh, give give Caleb Williams an opportunity that he didn't have in 2022. You didn't see that crazy stuff that was going on. In this year, so when you watch the pro day, you go, "All right, a little pulled back," and then you look at uh, the 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 two years of tape, and you sit there and go, "Well, one year he's a no brainer number one pick, and then the next year you sit here and go, "Well, how much of that can I bank on happening on Sundays?" Again, all reports are he's going to be the number one pick. For me, that's what I'd want to figure out if I were the Bears, amongst many other things. Again, reports coming out right now, 99% confirm that Caleb is the number one overall pick for the Chicago Bears. Uh, I assume at this point. He's probably the number one pick no matter what, but the Bears seem to be locked in. 90% estimated of their due diligence has been completed, and it looks like they are absolutely leaning towards Caleb Williams. Now, in the meantime, um, oh, and this should not surprise anybody, by the way. Um, the, the way this looks right now is Caleb Williams evaluation is 90% to the finish line and that it's 99% likely he will be the selection. A huge red flag will have to be discovered over the next five weeks and none are expected to arise. None, none realistically. There are some, I'm sure that there are going to be situations in which people are just not happy or they don't like uh, something about, I mean, look, this is a, this is not necessarily a volatile situation. But it's a difficult situation because this city really loved Justin Fields. So, you know, under that context, very difficult to bring in somebody uh, like a Caleb Williams or really anybody else in this fashion and 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 make it feel like this is a natural, successful, great scenario uh, and, and that we're big fans of it, et cetera. It's like very difficult uh, to do something like that. So, uh, you know, very, very possible that people are just going to hate no matter what. So. Uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out. But um, here's the thing, and and this is the quote of the uh, this is the quote of the com of the of pro day, right? When asked about Keenan Allen, Williams says he was with the Chargers and now he's here for a fourth round pick, which is crazy, coming off his best year. Now, guys, when you listen to that, the word here should stick out. That's basically you telling everybody you already know you're the number one pick. Like you've you've got it. You understand what's to come, right? You you've got that understanding. When asked about Keenan Allen, Williams says he was with the Chargers and now he's here for a fourth round pick, which is crazy. Now, by the way, somebody named Relic over here um, said something silly here on, on Twitter. Uh, not sure. And, and by the way, this was a thread where he was making these comments, right? Uh, and Relic says, not sure that what everyone in comments is missing, but he is saying Keenan Allen is here because Keenan was physically there at the pro day, LOL, the dapped and hugged before it began. So then I just said, you know, so USC gave up a fourth round pick for Keenan Allen to come to Caleb Williams pro day. Like the guy didn't even read the entire sentence and was just like Keenan Allen was there. So he must be because he didn't even listen to the context. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I just said, dude, blink tries to be being held hostage because that's crazy, right? Like we, we can agree that that's kind of nuts here, right? Um, he, he, he wasn't there at the at USC's pro day for a fourth round pick, which is crazy. He was there because if you like Justin Fields, I like Justin Fields. I get it. But come on, man. Come on, man. Not only that, but DJ Moore stepped in. And DJ Moore and Jalen Johnson both have some comments for 
Caleb Williams, and they really want to get into Caleb Williams right now and, and, and break it down and let him know. DJ Moore on how Caleb Williams can earn respect from the Bears locker room. I hope he just comes in and gets ready to work. You can't worry about the legacy of Justin Fields. You got to go out every got to go out there and worry about your own thing. So hopefully uh, he's going to be kind of helped along in this whole process. Um, and, and of course the haters, the haters have stepped in by the way, just so you know, uh, Caleb Williams should surpass the 10 win legacy of Justin Fields, uh, L M A O legacy. Um, be kind of funny if the bears selected a different quarterback, uh, and then we've got the laugh here of the Justin Fields legacy. And then we've got what legacy uh, Fields had no legacy. The bar is so low if we're just casually dropping the word legacy like that. The haters are out because somebody said something nice about Justin Fields. All 19% of the population that, you know what I mean? It, 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 and, and it should be noted here. Again, this is a small group of people um, it, that most people really like Justin Fields, even if we know that was a work in progress and it wasn't a fulfilled work in progress. Uh, the, and the progress never really got started, I guess we should probably say. But anyway, uh, let's move on here. Jalen Johnson offers important advice to the next Chicago Bears quarterback. And and um, he was on uh, it, on the Arrowhead Addict, something like that. Uh, so he was on K Adams on Up and Adams. And the thing that he said was... Um, um, that, that, you know, he's going to have to humble himself when he walks into this room. Um, otherwise he's going to get humbled, uh, by the, by the team. Um, there was a bit of an attitude in his response as if Jalen was telling, uh, he, he, he was, he was telling the, the telling Caleb Williams, he must earn the respect of the locker room. Uh, Johnson chuckled a bit, but in his answer, there was something that really stood about his leadership. With the Bears losing Captain Justin Fields and Eddie Jackson, Jalen Johnson uh, just made uh, Aberflus's job easy on where one of those sea patches is going. Although Johnson was on the record for supporting Fields, it goes to show that he's a good teammate and a great leader of this young defensive core. Rooting for Fields as a starter at the time and now being constructively critical of a potential draft prospect is nothing but positive as one of the main leaders of the Chicago Bears defense. Uh, the Bears have yet to physically draft Williams, but all signs are pointing to that being the outcome. So, you know, that looks like the possible, that looks like what's going to happen. That looks like the way that we're going. This is the, the next step in the process. Uh, so now the question is, how well does Caleb Williams get accepted into that locker room? And to be fair, like, I think the problem uh, is negligible and I think that it's going to be just fine. Uh, so now let's talk about the depth chart. Uh, this is what the starting lineup looks like on defense for, um, and, I, and I did go ahead and I got rid of the question mark. So we've got Demarcus Walker plugged in, uh, but uh, at defensive end, we've got Montez Sweat. Um, he had 12 and a half sacks, his career high. Um, on the defensive end side, by the way, uh, a, lo a lot of people are projecting somebody like Jared Verse or Dallas Turner, that there are some, there's Luatu Latu, there are some people out here. But if they don't go after that, then it is going to be, of course, Demarcus Walker. So for the moment, we're going to go with Demarcus Walker until we get a draft pick. Remember, even though uh, Demarcus Walker did not light it on fire, uh, he did not have a, a crazy good season or anything like that. He is a run stopper primarily. So the Bears could just be a very good run stopping team. And, you know, maybe uh, Demarcus Walker will, 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 you know, do a little bit of training with, uh, uh, with Montez Sweat, maybe, uh, and, and get a little bit better along the way. Uh, there's only so there's only so much upside, um, uh, but it, we'll see what happens. Uh, as for defensive tackles, uh, it looks like it's going to be at this point uh, Gervon Dexter and uh, Andrew Billings back up at this moment is going to be Zach Pickens. Uh, but we're obviously going to need a little bit more depth on that line, so there, there's going to have to be somebody uh, addressing that. Because there's gotta be, there's, there's gotta be something um, on that line. So uh, at the linebacker positions, uh, you've got uh, T.J. Edwards is going to be the Will, uh, Tremaine Edmonds is the Mike, and Jack Sanborn is the Sam. So no change from exactly what we expected. Uh, cornerbacks are going to be Jalen Johnson and Tyreek Stevenson on the depth chart. Uh, the nickel corner uh is going to be kyler gordon 
And then we've got your Quan Brisker and Kevin Byard as the safeties in that position. So uh, I think, you know, we, we put this together a couple days ago. We figured it out. And guess what? Turns out we have been absolutely right. Now, uh, before we move on, there was another article that came out uh, and it talked about like uh, NFL 24, the, the, the free agency, the most improved teams now include the, um, the Vegas Raiders, the Chicago Bears and the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, so uh, their, their rating, uh, the eight teams that improved the most were the Pittsburgh Steelers with the addition of, I mean, you know who they got, uh, Van Jefferson, Russell, uh, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Elliott, Justin Fields, Dante Jackson, and Patrick Queen. Uh, the Tennessee Titans were number seven, uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, Calvin Ridley, Mason Rudolph, Tony Pollard. Uh, number six was the Washington Commanders, Austin Eckler, um, Dorrance Strong, Jeremy Chin, Frankie Louvu, uh, Marcus Mariota, Bobby Wagner. Uh, number five was the New York Giants with Brian Burns, Drew Locke, Isaiah McKenzie, Devin Singletary. Uh, number four was the Raiders with Alexander Madison, Garner Minshew, and Christian Wilkins. Great addition, Christian Wilkins, of course. Uh, number three, the Houston Texans. Um, and by the way, remember, we were having a horrible, horrible free agency, by the way. And this is how it's ranking in the NFL right now. Aziz Alashir, uh, Jeff Okuda, Tim Settle, Joe Mixon, Daniel Hunter. Uh, you know, and by the way, I really missed the fact we should have gotten Daniel Hunter. Like that would have been a really good addition. Anyway, Texans came in number three. Uh, number two, Chicago Bears, Keenan Allen, Ryan Bates, Kevin Byer, Gerald Everett, Jonathan Owens, Coleman Shelton, DeAndre Swift. I mean, this really, you know, we really strengthened this lineup a lot. Um, so, you know, in the event that something really great happens here, uh, and, and I think that it will, that this is going to be a, a very nice lineup. And the Atlanta Falcons, of course, clocked in at number one because they got Kirk Cousins, Darnell Mooney, Rondale Moore. Uh, Rondale Moore, by the way, love that guy. Uh, by the way, lived and grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, Rondale Moore. Uh, always go back to the to the Louisville kids, even though he played for Purdue, by the way, because of uh, Jeff Brom. Uh, Charlie Warner and then Ray Ray McLeod, the third uh, for the for the Atlanta Falcons. So, you know, people recognizing that Ryan Poles did a fantastic job in this free agency. No splashy big names, a trade for Keenan Allen, and no real big splashy names uh, that, that you know, any, none of the big guys on the radar, but a solid draft class. And by the way, if you're worried about where they're going to, uh, about what they're going to do uh, with the salary cap, there's no more salary cap left. Uh, everything that they have at this point is, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're completely done with whatever it was that we were gonna do. You know what I mean? Like it was, whoo, did not work out very well. Make sure you hit the like button, by the way, on the way in. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, and, and, and checking this out. So um, now uh, I guess it's time for um, the offensive roster. No changes to the offensive roster. The offensive roster looks the same as what we, we kind of uh, predicted it was gonna look like. I mean, this is, you know, uh, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, um, Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins, Coleman Shelton, Nate Davis, and Darnell Wright. Uh, that seems to be it. I, I do think that we're going to be doing a two tight end, uh, two wide receiver. You know, I, I think this is the conservative approach that we're probably going to take, especially to start off. And and guys, I, I think it would figure if you're you know if if you're looking at a rookie, then you know this is what you want to do with a rookie. Like you want to um, you want to give that rookie as much protection as you possibly can. Uh, so again, we've got, we've got Caleb Williams penciled in there. We don't know for sure, but again, you know, 90% certain that they're done with their due diligence, 99% uh, probability that they're going to draft Caleb Williams. You know, all the pieces are in place to say that Caleb Williams is going to be that guy. And then DeAndre Swift. Uh, so it, it, it looks, you know, it, it, it looks, um, and Lord Crimson says, I wish they had done more to fix the offensive line. I, you know, I agree with that. I, I really think that uh, it would be awesome if they had done something like that to do a little bit more but also i don't want to waste the draft pick on like joe alt because it would take too much to get up there um olu Fashanu probably i mean if he drops to nine then you have to take a uh you have to take a, 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 a you have to answer the question is braxton jones that guy and you know even though the jury is still out on him he's not been horrible at any point he's actually graded out fairly well as a left tackle. Larry Borum is the reason we looked so bad last year. So Matt Pryor coming in, I think he represents at least an upgrade at, you know, just in case something happens to Darnell Wright or Braxton Jones. I think Matt Pryor 
uh, is probably a better relief option than Larry Borum. So, I mean, upgrades have been made. I just don't know. Um, I just don't know, like, how do you get there? How do you get those people? And here's the other part. If defense wins championships, this has got to be good enough, and we've got to put some focus on that defense. We still need a defensive tackle no matter what. There's only three on the roster. So, like, you you literally aren't going to be able to, to, to field a team if you run out of defensive tackles, right? So uh, you, you got to have at least one more. Um, and then you, you don't have, you know, the defensive end room. Like you really, I think, want to get rid of somebody and you want to get some pass rushing in. And there's no pass rush other than Montez Sweat. I mean, this is prohibitive. If you look at this defense, you love some of what you see on this defense. You know, the, the, the linebackers, pretty good core of linebackers. The secondary at large is going to be phenomenal. I mean, there's a very good secondary. Uh, but then you've got uh, Montez Sweat, Andrew Billings, you know, wonderful run stopper. Gravon Dexter, wonderful run stopper. Gravon Dexter shows some ability to get back into the backfield, though. You know, that's that's the thing. Like, you've got a left side of that line that looks really, really potentially good. I mean, if, can you imagine if Gravon Dexter commands two uh, defenders or if Montez Sweat commands those two defenders? I mean, remember, you know, the problem with Khalil Mack way back in the, in, in the old days. Khalil Mack, he had two and three people blocking him at a time because nobody else could get uh, it could get pressure, right? Well, what if, um, I mean, don't, shouldn't we put value on the pressure, right? And that leads us to DeMarcus Walker, great run stopper, but not a great pass rusher. Like we've got to have an upgrade in that position. In my opinion, that to me is more paramount than getting another offensive tackle. When I think that at least Braxton Jones is a serviceable guy who will do a good job, and that Caleb Williams will make all of these guys' jobs much easier. Let's go back to the, the biggest issue that we have with Justin Fields was 3.23 seconds to release the ball. Uh, if Caleb Williams comes in here and does it at 2.7 or under, then we've solved a lot of the problem that we had with this line. So if the line is better and Caleb Williams is making the quicker throws, just by proxy, just 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 by being there. Uh, if he makes the quicker throws uh, and and they do a, a better job of protection, well, problem is solved. You know, um, Caleb Williams is going to make up for some of that offensive line and give these guys an opportunity to shine a little bit more. And this is just my opinion. It doesn't mean it's factual. My opinion of Justin Fields hasn't changed at all either. Uh, it's just my opinion. It's not factual. So my opinion is Caleb Williams probably released the ball faster. Uh, the offensive line will look better. And then, you know, we'll, we'll feel like we we got somewhere. It's just, a, just an opinion. Uh, so now let's get into the mock draft. This is what I did. Uh, by the way, uh, I did move down because I remembered the center position uh, and I wanted to get more draft picks. Now, I did not get anything close to what I wanted, but I feel like I put um, some, some, I feel like I got into... I got Caleb Williams, obviously, at number one. I traded down number nine to 19, and I picked up a 45 and a 52 by making that trade down. Um, and then at number 19, I was able to get Jackson Powers Johnson. Then I was able to use number 45 to get Darius Robinson. Now, again, Darius Robinson, probably not an every down back in the NFL, not at this point, but he is an edge rusher, uh, and he could get that. Uh, you know, he he could be that first down guy. Uh, he could be that second down, obvious passing down sort of guy to get pressure on the quarterback. He could be if, if it's a third, if it's a third and long, then he could be your third down guy. You know, he could be your edge um, sack specialist along with Montez Sweat. That's an opportunity for him. Um, very big, very lean uh, and, and very explosive, dynamic sort of guy. Is he an every down guy? I don't know yet. You know what I mean? Then you got Tavondre Sweat. Tavondre Sweat, gigantic defensive tackle, takes up a lot of space, and he was great for the Texas defense. So uh, that is the one guy that I'm plugging in. And then number 75, I took Roman Wilson. I know some people are going to argue about Roman Wilson, but look, the guy is a, is, is, is a very good route runner. Uh, he, he's a, a national championship. He was the star of that team, or he's the star receiver on that team. Uh, and he, he's available you know, in the beginning of the third round. Um, that's where, you know, I, maybe I'm upgrading now from Tyler Scott. I don't know if it's an upgrade, but I think it's an upgrade from Tyler Scott. And this, so I think that with five picks only, 
like I serviced the quarterback position, uh, the center of the future, uh, the edge rusher, the, or at least the plug-in edge rusher that we need for that, uh, and then Tavondre Sweat, which at least provides some depth and some meat on that uh, uh, on that defensive line, and then Roman Wilson as my slot receiver. Um, you know, at some point, uh, Roman Wilson, uh, depending on you know whatever the circumstances are, maybe this guy works out and you know becomes great. You never know. So, um, but that you know that this is the the hard part is when you only have four selections, like you get really screwed and you get really um, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, you get really kind of screwed if you 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 try to do too much with it. So, uh, with that, let's um. You know, let's kind of pop in here, and and by the way, somebody said uh, you know there's uh, there's better um, there, there's better mock draft simulators. I went through like five of them, and they all suck by comparison. So I disagree. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. I mean, this is we got four picks. Uh, I'm I'm actually doing one of these drafts with you with you guys live right now. Uh, again, we're gonna assume that the first thing that we're doing is. Um, is taking Caleb Williams. So we remove, we, we're going to get rid of all the, the offers that we get right there. We're taking Caleb Williams. Now, what do we do with that number nine pick? And then the question becomes, you know, on the right over here, you can see in this little grade out here, but we've got JJ McCarthy. Of course, we're not taking him. We got Caleb, but we got Brock Bowers. We got Malik Neighbors. Um, we've got Terry and Arnold. We've got Luatu Latu. We've got Talise Fuaga. We've got Jared Verse. We've got Quinion Mitchell. We've got Troy Fatanu. We have a lot of we have a lot of potential people here, and we only got one offer, and that's a pick at number thirty right here. So the question is going to be: I mean, even if I only take four players, right? Uh, what is the next move right here? I mean, what do you guys think? I know. I mean, I know Lord Crimson is probably going to tell me Talise Fuaga. I'm going to make that as a guess. Um, Crimson, what do you think? At the number nine selection here. Um, you have no, whether we could trade down. I mean, we could, we could, you know, try to, uh, mill our way down there and make some offers or something like that. But just assuming that we had to, to take it, Amarius Mims, Fatanu, uh, Troy Fatanu, uh, JC Latham, offensive tackle out of Alabama. Um, you know, what is the position? What is it that we're looking to do right there? Um, Latu, Jared Verse. Um, I mean, maybe Latu is probably gonna be the better option. You know what I mean? Um, you know what? I'm going to go on with it. Latu. We're taking Latu. Uh, so we've got our edge rusher, uh, which, by the way, he's probably, other than Dallas Turner, probably and arguably as good as Dallas Turner, the 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 edge rusher that we need. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to take the number 75. I'm going to trade that one if I can get a, a good offer. 85 and 156 or 86 and 127. We're going to take that one right there. Uh, so now we've got a couple. We've got one more pick. Uh, so now we're going to reject that one and we're going to reject that one because we're not looking for future right now. Uh, so we also have this opportunity here. So what are we going to do here? Uh, Roman Wilson or Braden Fisk? We're going to take Braden Fisk because, again, uh, I like the defensive tackle more than anything else. And I do think we're going to go two tight ends, uh, two wide receiver sets. We're going to do a lot of that. So or at least in my opinion, we're going to do a lot of that. Uh, and then we got another offer here, 128, and 163. We're taking that so we get more picks uh, now. Delmer Glaze. Um, let's go for it. We got an offensive tackle here. Uh, now we've got another win. Uh, we don't, and you know what? Tyler says, I'm not sold on Caleb. You don't have to be sold on Caleb. Uh, it, it, I mean, you know, it doesn't really matter whether we are or not. It's it's what the team is. Uh, so, you know, we just kind of have to accept it. Uh, so, so far, we've got Caleb Williams. We've got uh, Luatu Latu. Uh, we've got Braden Fisk. We've got Delmer Glaze. Uh, and now... I mean, uh, wide receiver, maybe Brendan Rice. There we go. We got Brendan Rice familiar with the system already knows Caleb. So, uh, you know, we've got Jerry Rice's kid that's out here doing that. And now, uh, let's take Bo Limmer. That's a center of the future, potentially not sure he even makes the roster, uh, but he's a service. He could be a serviceable backup for right now, but you can see this, that complicated, like it's very difficult uh, when you don't trade that number one and number nine down, I mean, look how complicated this becomes. Like, you know, you got Caleb Williams, sure. Uh, and then you got Latu. Uh, so you fixed two really of need positions right here, but you you lost a lot of draft capital. Uh, capital. And as you go down here, you know, 86, you got Braden Fisk. And by the way, Braden Fisk is a big time player, but not, you know, not fantastic. Um, 
I think he, I mean, he graded out well with nobody guarding him. You know what I mean? Uh, and Delmer Glaze, same thing, you know, offensive tackle out of Maryland. These are potentials. Uh, and then you got Brendan Rice. He's familiar with Caleb Williams. This probably would be a, a fantastic pickup if we could get it. Not even that he would play a whole lot, but he would be familiar with Caleb's throwing style and stuff like that and can anticipate pretty well. And then you have Bo Limmer. Bo Limmer, even though he's not the greatest of uh, centers in this draft, he's still a good center in this draft. And look, a lot of people are saying Coleman Shelton is not the greatest of of, of uh, draft picks as well. So uh, there we go. That's it, guys. we got a short show today. Um, so, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. This is what we got. Uh, this is what's going on. If you're, uh, by the way, if you're Bitcoin, Bitcoin's trading at 66,700 right now, uh, a little bit of a dip in the market. I expect to be, uh, I expect to see some more dipping, uh, in this market down to 66,000 where there's a big liquidity pool. So if you are an investor and you haven't been tuning in because you are an investor, uh, 66,000, and then probably a move up into the 68.5 coming for Bitcoin pretty soon. But anyway, that's it for the day. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to come check me out and, uh, remember to bear down and, uh, we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Hey, 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 hey.